Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Santiago Hiraldo, Director of Product Marketing at Akamai. Santiago, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. It's my pleasure. And today we are going to talk about distributed computing and why developers should care about it. Uh, but before we get into this discussion, I would love to also hear a bit about uh, how would you define distributed computing, how it's different from the traditional cloud computing, and sometimes people often confuse distributed computing with uh, decentralized computing. So if you can just you know, demystify these terms so that we do know that what we are targeting at. A good way to think about this is that when we think about how cloud computing is uh, is used today, um, we tend to see a lot of these other organizations have giant uh, monolithic style data centers in a variety of different regions. This is quite a centralized approach where what we end up seeing is that for things that require incredibly low latency, uh, such as AI inferencing or uh, media streaming, uh, you see variances in the experience that people are receiving um, as a result of where that infrastructure and where that computing is actually happening. So if you're looking at um, at these centralized compute regions, the farther away you are, the worse the experience is, which could be quite detrimental for a series of organizations, um, especially where uh, that low latency capacity is absolutely necessary. Um, when we talk about distributed computing, it's sort of the inverse of that. Our goal here is to really put computing power as close as possible to the users so that we can provide the best possible experience, whether they're viewing videos, whether they're gaming, uh, whether they're receiving hyper-personalization through an application and beyond. Is it possible for you to give some real life use case examples of distributed computing so folks can also relate to it? I think that there's, there's a lot of emerging examples and one of the ones that we see quite often is in the live streaming video or video on demand sector. So um, what these organizations are trying to reach millions of users with millions of streams across the world, what they need to do is really put that computing power and put that transcoding and encoding as close as possible to the user so they can deliver the lowest latency experience possible across the board. Um, this means that they can stream global events at a global scale anywhere in the world through our distributed uh, cloud computing network. Um, which basically enables a better experience, better security, and a more seamless viewing experience across the board. Another example here that we see oftentimes is around things like retail or hyper-personalization inside of applications. Now, what does this look like? Um, when a customer is trying to receive, for example, a uh, very personalized advertisement or an offer from an organization, um, time timeliness is absolutely essential. So the more... the uh, the faster that we can serve these, um, so, sorry, I'm, I'm, I know you, you'll be able to edit this, right? <laughs> um, so the, the faster that we can actually serve these promotions or these hyper-personalized ads and things to the user, the better experience they will have and the more chances of interactions that, they, that the company will receive. So we've seen, for example, in certain use cases, an uptick of over 50% in interactivity and a reduction of churn of over 18% for many of these use cases. While we look at some of the examples, are there also cases where, because the market is changing, I mean, you gave all the streaming and other things, but if you can also talk about some of those businesses that really require distributors, it's not like a value add for users, like, you know, like recommendations of what movies I should watch is different from movies that my neighbor watches. That is the honest, you know, and, you know, all these streaming services they do, they also change the poster, a lot of things depending on my personal attitude. But these are more like, you know, additional nice to have. But can you talk about industries, businesses where they actually need distributed computer? Yeah, absolutely. So I already mentioned a bit about video and video streaming, which is very uh, fundamental to uh, it, it's a very it's a very good use case for distributed cloud just because of the nature of how you're streaming something such as the olympics or or a sporting event uh, as an example another vertical where this is absolutely critical is gaming so when you're doing matchmaking um when you're trying to provide the best quality low latency experience to these users that are um, that are oftentimes in, in competitive gaming situations or live gaming situations. You want to provide the best possible experience across the board, no matter where they are. This is, um, this is, I think, an issue that gets exposed 
uh, even more so when you're thinking about these very uh, concentrated, centralized, verticalized computing regions that a lot of um, that a lot of the hyperscalers and other organizations have, where the farther away that you are from the resources and the farther away you are from the infrastructure, um, that could be the difference between um, you know making or breaking a game in particular. So with a distributed cloud, um, specifically in gaming, you can accelerate that process of matchmaking and you can provide a better experience in regions that typically um, may not be able to have the same quality of experience in gaming across the board. And you can think of places in you know, uh, South America, parts of Africa, um, parts of Asia, where a lot of these uh, infrastructures are just not equipped to handle that level of distributed computing across. Now, when we talk about some of these use cases, latency really becomes critical. Uh, when it comes to edge native applications, uh, can you talk about, uh, given the requirement of extremely low latency, of course, security is also there because it's not in your you know, data center or co-located wherever it is, it's the edge far out there. Talk about because of latency, because of you know privacy or security, what kind of challenges distributed cloud poses for developers versus centralized or you know uh, traditional cloud, if you can use that term here. When you think about edge native applications, really the name of the game is again providing the best possible experience to the users. Um, that means uh, low latency for anything that they might be doing. And you have to think about this in terms of a lot of applications that um, that organizations are trying to really bring to the foreground of their business um, are mission critical. So let's say that you're relying on a specific machine learning model or a large language model to make critical decisions for your business in the timeliest way possible. Um, having a distributed cloud and being able to run that inferencing at the edge, very close to the users, and putting those applications as close as possible to the edge makes it so that um, the time to value and the time to decision is drastically reduced depending on where, uh, where these applications are running. And you can think about it in this way. If you're a global organization and you're trying to deploy uh, an AI solution or an edge native application for decision making um, uh, on a global scale to everybody across every region, um, oftentimes that requires a degree of complexity that um, that, op that is, is really, frankly, unnecessary oftentimes. So that re they'll require deploying in multiple regions. It requires managing different infrastructures. Oftentimes it might require a multi-cloud strategy that requires um, managing and, uh, and orchestrating a variety of different, uh, of different cloud providers, um, which then inherently creates things like uh, an increased and unpredictable cost for things like egress and transfer of data, duplication of data. With, um, with Akamai and our distributed cloud, really what we're providing is a continuum of compute. So we do have our core regions that are very robust data centers where a lot of this computational uh, capability can be leveraged um, in a similar way to any other large centralized data center. But the difference there is that um, the, the applications, the projects, the workloads, the data can be deployed really close to the user through our distributed cloud and also our edge locations. Um, what this basically does is enables you to power those applications at a global scale with less overhead, less cost, less complexity, and a more streamlined way to provide a better experience for your users, whether that's internal or external. When we look at these uh, distributed edge native applications, uh, and we look at some of the challenges that developers face as compared to traditional uh, deployment on traditional cloud, uh, what kind of solutions or how Akamai make it easier for uh, developers from cloud to the edge? I think a good way to think about this is that what we've built with our cloud computing platform uh, is really a developer first platform. So it's built on open source uh, and it enables uh, all developers to work with the tooling that they need, the frameworks that they desire, um, the tools that they're used to working with. Uh, and it helps them essentially hit the ground running with a lot less fuss, a lot less overhead and a lot less complexity. So by being able to build and develop inside of our computing regions, and then being able to seamlessly um, deliver that across our distributed cloud, which all of it is interconnected um, and managed centrally uh, through, through our cloud management console. Um, it essentially provides an experience where you don't have to manage these different regions separately, but you can really essentially have a cohesive continuum of compute uh, 
that you can leverage from one single place without having to worry about, again, duplication of data, uh, security problems, um, or, or, other, uh, or other complexities such as, as I mentioned before, multi-cloud environments, um, you know, uh, complex deployments across different regions, or, or worrying about having a, a subpar experience in other parts of the world. One of the hottest trend these days or last year is AI and Gen AI. I mean, AI has been around for a very long time. We talk a lot about Gen AI these days. Uh, every company is, of course, targeting AI. When it comes to AI workloads, how do you look at distributed cloud there? And what kind of challenges it poses for developers? And once again, how does Akamai help them? No, sure. And, and I think this this is a really important question, especially as as uh, the world of AI continues to rapidly evolve. So some of the things that we've noticed um, from a lot of customers is that we're still in somewhat early days, especially when it comes to novel things like large language models. Um, however, a lot of organizations are working very hard to really make these very robust and very accessible, especially in the open source. So you can think of things like Llama 3 as an example, um, you know, uh, models that come out of Hugging Face, things like that, as well as the propriety, uh, proprietary uh, models that come out of OpenAI, Google, etc. Um, the big thing here is that uh, those models are largely generic, but they are largely commoditized already. They work really well for generalized purposes. Uh, what we're really trying to focus on on doing here is enabling folks to be able to use, whether it's a large language model or whether you're uh, predicting churn or whether it's uh, some other application like hyper-personalization going back to retail, um, to, be able, to be able to provide basically the best possible experience across the board for every user that, that is trying to leverage these. So um, one of the big focus areas for us is really around AI inferencing. So Yes, we have a way of building these models. You can build them um, in Akamai. You can build them um, in your hyperscalers. But ultimately, those models don't really do anything until a user can get their hands on them, until they're interpretable, until they're usable, and until somebody can actually put this into, into their workflow and into their workloads in the most effective way possible. So by focusing on a distributed cloud for AI inferencing, what we've done effectively is reduce the time to decision and the, reduce the time of inference drastically for a wide range of users. Especially as you scale to a global audience, that becomes even more important to be able to provide that kind of insight very quickly, where a matter of uh, milliseconds or seconds could be the difference between you know, uh, a, a very successful event or a very successful user experience or a company um, you know, losing a substantial amount of revenue. Of course, we have been talking about efficiency and writing business application, but let's also talk about security. What unique challenges distributed cloud poses when it comes to security? Of course, security has become a very important topic. It's no longer an afterthought. Optimized routes are in security either way, so you folks are very well positioned to handle security issue as well. But let's talk about the security aspect of distributed cloud as well. I think this is a really key, uh, a really key consideration for many organizations today. Um, as, as you know, um, you know, Akamai has a very robust uh, suite of security products that are fully integrated inside of our platform. So the Akamai Connected Cloud, the vision for this is really, um, you know, uh, is really combining all of the things that are necessary in order to really provide a truly uh, differentiated and enterprise level experience um, in a distributed fashion. So um, you can think about it in terms of what does it actually take to get an application out into the wild? First and foremost, you need to have the compute resources and then the distributed cloud, that continuum of compute that lets you build and then deliver those applications where they need to go effectively um, with the lowest latency possible. Second, you need to be able to secure those applications no matter where they are. Um, and because our distributed cloud is fully integrated inside of the cloud platform and it doesn't require management of different regions or different clouds, um, we, can, we can really consolidate that and provide a unified experience where both security, uh, delivery, and compute are all working in tandem to give the best possible uh, outcomes to our, to our users at the lowest price point. Can you also talk about how easy and simple is it for developers to kind of shift cloud computer resources to the edge, of course, through Akamai's connected cloud. It's, it's quite easy. So 
Um, the nature of our distributed cloud is, again, the, the continuum of compute that we built really has those three elements of it. It has the core compute regions that really um, bring the bring the power to be able to build and develop and uh, and and um, and structure these applications uh, in, in a way that's expected, you know, through virtual machines and Kubernetes and everything in between. Um, but then it's fully integrated with our distributed cloud. So as you begin to deploy across on, on a, at a global scale, you're not actually replicating entire applications and entire workloads across different giant regions everywhere. Um, you're doing it dynamically to meet your users where they are today, and you can actually essentially combine those different those uh, those different compute regions to effectively deliver the uh, uh, to effectively deliver those results at a global scale. And then at the edge, of course, we do have our, our edge pop locations, um, which which further accelerate the ability to do lightweight computation, no matter where those users are. So you know, with over four thousand regions um, uh, through our edge locations, uh, and uh, you know, looking towards uh, developing hundreds of distributed locations, um, along with our core regions that are now uh, that have now grown to a global scale, we truly offer a differentiated experience where all these things work in tandem seamlessly. Um, as opposed to having to manage a bunch of different infrastructure separately. Santiago, thank you so much for joining me today and, of course, talk about distributed cloud. Thanks for great insights, and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much.